So tell us about this new partnership and how it will work. Well, it's wonderful. So Toyota is uh, the world's uh, leading auto manufacturer. Uh, we're going to have a chance to work with them, bringing the Aurora driver uh, to their platform and ultimately deliver that to ride hailing customers. And so we're, we're extremely excited about the partnership and, you know, aligned with their vision of mobility for everyone. So the Toyota Sienna minivan was chosen as the first Toyota vehicle to have the Aurora driver. Um, wh why a minivan? Is the first use case a shuttle service um, or something else? Well, I, I think when you, you think about easy vehicles to get in and out of for ride hailing, uh, it seems like just an, an excellent platform for that. It's comfortable, it's spacious, it can help people get where they're going. So we, we think that's the right platform and you know we're excited to, to get going with it. So do you see a shuttle service or more of, you know, a ride hailing use case um, in this initial scenario? So as we think about the, what the Aurora driver is going to deliver to the market, it's a platform to move all kinds of vehicles. And as you know, a little while ago, we announced a partnership with PACCAR, uh, one of North America's largest truck manufacturers. And so we expect our first application to be in, in large freight, uh, and, you know, these big class eight heavy duty trucks. And uh, those will be operating on the freeway. Uh, and then we'll be working with Toyota and taking the Aurora driving capability that has this, this unique ability to see a long way down the road because of the special LiDAR technology we have, coupling that with the Sienna platform. And then sure, perhaps applications are in shuttle services, but you know most or, or a significant fraction of ride hailing trips actually require you to drive on the freeway to get where you're going. If you just think about, you know, uh, for those of us who live in the Bay Area here, uh, you know, down the peninsula and going up to San Francisco, you know, you have to get on a freeway to get there. Um, and so we, we think that combination technology and, and great partnership will, will pave the way, a unique path for us to bring the Aurora driver to market. Now, Toyota is obviously the largest automaker in the world. So this gives you a huge high volume manufacturer. I'm curious about how the service then actually rolls out. Toyota is an investor in Uber. Uber is an investor in Aurora. How does the service roll out and who's responsible for the fleet? Well, we, I guess we think about it as, as bringing three of best in breed together. Uh, so at Aurora, we're focused on building the driver and then enabling our partners to build their businesses. Uh, we look at uh, Uber as the world's leading ride hailing platform. Uh, and then Toyota is the, the world's leading OEM. And you put the three of them together, uh, then we can deliver an incredible experience to, to uh, Uber's customers. Uh, we can make getting around safer, more accessible, uh, and over time bring the, the cost of this down. And so we're, we're really excited about that prospect. Now, you mentioned some of the other deals uh, that you've been making. With all of these deals stacking up, how confident are you about bringing autonomous cars to the masses and when? I mean, it's one thing to have these... Um, you know, ca cars out there in limited quantities, but it's another for, for, for them to be mainstream. Well, that was the whole premise in founding Aurora is that we were able to bring together this incredible group of people who had been working in the space for a long time, understood many of the challenges, and thus were able to bring the next generation of technology to market in the space. And so I think what you've seen over the last couple of months is, you know, the, the uh, kind of validation of what we've been building. Uh, and, you know, be able to align with, North, you know, one of North America's largest truck manufacturers, you know, this amazing OE, uh, the, the Uber uh, platform, right? We're just, we can't be more excited about uh, where this is going. And we're going to be bringing it to market as, as safely and quickly as possible. So look forward to, to more soon. Now, there's been a lot of speculation just in the last few days about Apple's dog in this fight or, or car in this race, if you will. You know, you uh, ran Google's self-driving car efforts back in the day. Um, you, you know, your, your co-founder worked at Tesla. Um, and you have to be thinking about the competition. I'm curious, how are you preparing for competition on the Apple front? Do you see them as being a formidable competitor in this race? I think Apple is incredible at whatever they set their mind to, right? They're, they're an amazing company. But I think for Aurora, we're really focused on building the best team, having the best technology, and then we'll work with, with anyone who wants to build their business, uh, right? We think the, you know, the, the power of the Aurora driver is going to enable a, a lot of companies to build great businesses and thus, you know, a lot of people to, to benefit. Uh, and so, you know, we'd, we, we'd love to work with everyone. 
Does that mean you'd work with Apple? Oh, absolutely. Of course we'd work with Apple. Um, they're, they're an incredible company. <laughs> and do you have any inclination as to how far away they might be from a self-driving electric car? No, we, we spend our time focusing on, on what Aurora is building. And, you know, we're, you know, as we, we kind of continue to accelerate, whether it's with the LIDAR that we now have that can see, you know, we think further than anyone else can down the road or the, the way we've combined machine learning with a kind of conventional algorithmic approaches, we we're, we're have conviction we're going to get there, uh, you know, quickly and, and deliver something that matters. And you know, you know, the world, Chris, and, and transportation is is changing, especially as we come out of a pandemic. And you know, it's it's anyone's guess what new normal looks like. How much we're going to be in cars, um, in shuttles, riding a bus, for example. I'm curious what that world looks like to you. Um, you know, as we get back to some sort of new normal, but after going through this dramatic change. Yeah, I, I think that the. You know, the reason we have cars today is because um, it's convenient uh, and efficient to get from one place to another. Uh, and whether we have a pandemic or not, um, we, we still need to get places. Uh, and so I'm a big believer that by making that underlying capability, whether it's to get goods through the world or get people through the world um, safer, so fewer people are injured, fewer people are killed on our roads, um, making it more convenient, democratizing the access of it. Let's not forget that, you know, the, the cost of transportation is one of the largest costs for any one of us of a day. But making all of that uh, safer, better, less expensive over time, right? That's going to be, that's going to matter uh, in the future state of the world. And, and we're proud to be building a company uh, that, um, you know, cares about delivering this technology in the right way to market. So what do the roads look like in, let's say, five years? And what is Aurora's role on them? Yeah, so so in five years, we're going to still see a mixture of, of people driving cars and trucks and uh, Aurora-driven vehicles on the road. Um, we're going to begin with uh, building, uh, with our partners at PACCAR, trucks that can drive themselves, and they'll work from, from uh, just off the freeway to on the freeway to getting back off at, at depots at the other end. And that will start to, to make it safer to move goods through the world. And in parallel with that, you'll start to see the Aurora driver helping to move people through the world uh, and, uh, you know, getting them from down the peninsula to up the peninsula or, you know, uh, across uh, Houston or Dallas, uh, right? And, and those initial applications will come to market. And then as we understand better how people need this technology to work, we'll refine that and continue to grow it in the, in the coming decades ahead.